Okay, thanks guys, great presentation. Thanks for sharing. Next up is uh, Mr. Joe Thibault, who is uh, part of the team with Jim and I. Uh, been, been a super addition uh, with his expertise in fire that he's gonna talk a little bit about now. So Joe. Hey Paul, thanks. Greetings everyone, Joe Thibault here. Hey, you, you know, I, I, I started looking at the, the electric vehicle issue, uh, vehicle fires, and, you know, does it have any effect on us? And what effect does it have on us? And then I, I started receiving lots of messages um, from, from peers and, and, and coworkers and, who are experiencing uh, some of these uh, events. And, um, you know, they, they were like, you know, we, we, we've got to lean forward on this. You know, we, 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 we've got to do something on this. So, you know, I started to educate myself on, on some of this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not an expert on electric vehicles or their fires, okay? You could squeeze my knowledge into a thimble, okay? <laughs> but I know more than the most, and, and it would behoove everyone who, who may be exposed to it. To, uh, to, to take a look at, at, at the different challenges that are out there. So looking, looking at Tim, I said, okay, so what's the, what's the effects that we, that we have on our timeline here? Well, almost immediately the effects were you know, extended timelines and a, a, an incredible uh, uh, taxation on, on our resources. So you know, when we look at the Tim timeline, we can, we, we can kind of safely say, that um, from from the time that it's dispatched until we get to normal flow or T7, right in the timeline, you know that's that's a huge gray area when it, when, when we have electric vehicles, and and, I, and I'm going to show you why. And, and if you've experienced one of these, you know then then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there are many 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 departments out there, whether it's fire, rescue, EMS, towing, recovery law enforcement, it doesn't matter who have yet to see one or experience one, but it's coming, right? It, it's coming, and it's coming quick. So I took a look at the response challenges, and, you know, just some of those, right? So we, we have an absence of standardized electrical safety disconnect locations on some of these vehicles. And I'll talk, talk a little bit about that in just a second uh, and what that means to us. Um, and, and the very little or, or kind of gray area on directional and extinguishment, right? We're told, you know, copious amounts of water. Well, that's one thing, right, in an urban area and totally different animal than when you're in the rural and remote regions. Uh, and, and I'll touch on that a little more, too. What most departments have seen up to this point are passenger vehicle fires. You know, your sedan, your small sedan. Uh, that's what you know. What's out there the most, so to speak. But what's coming? What's already out there, uh, and, and coming in, in huge volumes are these commercial vehicles, right? So you got big vehicles have big batteries, and big batteries will give you big fires, and that equates to long on scene time. So we know that the longer that we're out there and exposed to traffic, right? Of course, our risk gets higher, and, and then we you know begin to deplete our resources. So you know. T4 in the timeline, you know, T4 in the timeline is uh, when we arrive on scene, you know, and, and take it from there. Uh, and and it, it's, it's quite a challenge. So talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the construction of, of the sedans, if you would, and the passenger non-commercial vehicles. Um, and, and it's basically the entire floor pan, right? So everything that you're looking at uh, on, on the bottom here, of this vehicle, this entire flat black surface down here that you're seeing on this on this vehicle, uh, is the battery tray, is, as the industry calls them. I call it a battery pan, but it's a battery tray. Now, when some commercial vehicles, right, buses, uh, larger vehicles, the the roof is the battery tray, and I'll talk about that a little more also. So one thing we can see by by looking at the the bottom of this vehicle is that. You know, they're designed to be watertight, element tight, from from Mother Nature, right? Keep the, keep the elements out of there. So keep that in mind, right? So when, when, when we have an incident with one of these vehicles, here's the pan, here's the tray. This is what it looks like removed from the vehicle. Um, what, what we can see on, on this top side, the black shiny side here on the top, um, these are, these are, uh, uh, 
actually uh, overheat or, or thermal blow-offs, if you would, right? That if pressure within that particular category builds because of a uh, thermal runaway, which is when, you know, you get an overheat, uh, overcharge of one cell, it ignites, and then it transfers to the next cell block over, if you would, you try to keep it simple, and then it just continues on, uh, and, and it's a tiger by the tail. But this one here has, has you know, thermal relief, pressure relief baffles, if you would, on the top, that, that you know, they will give way, and they will allow for, for pressure to blow off, but it also allows for uh, flammable gases and, and ignition. Some of these things have ports down the side rails of them, round ports, uh, almost looks like a molding port, uh, and they too are, are designed to exhaust gases and, and heat. Uh, usually by that time, you know, thermal runaway is already initiated, if not, you know, in full bloom by, by that point. But that's, that's the battery pan of, a, of just a, your basic sedan model, if you would. When it comes to de-energizing uh, an electric vehicle, Right, that's that's a challenge. Why is it a challenge? Well, take a look at this. Right, every one of these red arrows on here is pointing towards the disc, the electric disconnect for that particular model vehicle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, there's a dozen of them here, or 13 or so, and you can see every one of them in a different spot. And you see some of these arrows pointing to the roof. Well, it's really not. You know, it's not the roof. It's below, it's, it's down inside there, either in the, the center console or in the rear seating area. Um, but you can see that there's just basically, there's no standardization. So when you roll up on one of these uh, and you need to start taking some offensive action, let's say it's not a fire, it's a rescue scenario, and you need to start cutting, you need to do a door pop, roof flat, dash roll, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, you're, we're, we're dealing with high voltage and low voltage uh, applications here so we want to make sure we disconnect but how do you do that you know in the heat of the moment well there's several apps out there phone apps uh, and websites where you can bring it up on your phone real quick the make and model if you know what that is and they'll kind of point you towards where the high voltage low voltage uh, disconnects are um, you know in the heat of the moment it's it's, it's tough to, how they say it, it's uh, it's tough to remember that your initial task was to drain the swamp when you're up to your neck in alligators, right? So, you know, this th this is what, you know, we're being uh, confronted with out there. And this is just, these are just the sedans. So, you know, de-energizing the vehicle, you know, is a huge challenge and a safety risk because stranded energy kills, right? Talking 100 volts to 200 volt DC for, for your hybrid plug-in hybrid vehicles, you know, the earlier models, even some of the today's models, but primarily it's 400 to 800 volts DC uh, for electric only, right? And, and, you know, you think, ah, oh, well, it's DC current, right? Well, you know, most subway trains, light rail trains, they operate at 750 volts DC. So if you're not willing to go out there and touch the third rail, uh, you're... <laughs> you're going to want to exercise some caution when you're dealing with electric vehicles and, and, and the power that they have. Uh, they, they, they maintain a charge all, you know, very similar to a capacitor bank, if you're familiar with the capacitor. So that energy is just sitting there waiting for some place to go. And if that some place to go happens to be through your arm, down your body, and into your feet to the ground, um, you, you can see three to eight, uh, three to eight milliamps you know, it's a thousandth of an amp, you know, to, to stop the human heart. So you can see it's, it, it's a very deadly situation if we, if we don't approach it cautiously. Now, we have crashes that don't have a fire, right? There's no fire involved. You roll up, you know, you got the car crushed. You got maybe, maybe it's not even a, 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 a what we call a major crash, right? And that is maybe there's some wheel damage. One of the wheels, maybe the car slid to the side, hit the curb, you know, busted the wheel assembly up. Right, and then, you know, along comes, you know, towing recovery, you folks, right, you all get there and, uh, you know, you do your thing with, you know, moving the vehicle. And, you know, the, the kicker is, is that a lot, of these, a lot of these vehicles, there's an independent motor at each wheel, and there's a computer looking at these wheels and how they turn and what the demand is on them. And when you have a vehicle that's designed for four-wheel motion, but only three wheels are turning and the other one has faulted, um, it creates confusion, I'll say, within the, the computerized system. 
And what it does is it, it overheats or can overheat uh, some of the, the battery uh, uh, modules inside that tray. And then once that occurs, then you get thermal runaway. And once you have thermal runaway, well, you know, it, Katie bar the doors because copious amounts of water um, is, uh, is what's recommended but doesn't always work. Um, so, you, you know, we've had vehicles that have been pulled up on to, to a, uh, a, uh, uh, a rollback uh, recovery vehicle, and that vehicle is, you know, chugging on down the road, heading towards the yard, when suddenly the electric vehicle on board bursts into flame. Um, because thermal runaway is occurring, it may have occurred when the vehicle was moved and, you know, pulled up onto the back, it, it, uh, multiple ways that, that it could have ignited. And, and there's cases where these things have been stored in the yard for a week, two weeks, three weeks, never were involved in a fire, but suddenly ignite. So, you know, the, the, these are some of the challenges, you know, that, that we have out there that we have to be aware of. We have to lean forward on. Remember when airbags first came about in, in, in vehicles, right? And it, it took a while before you know, fire service, rescue service realized that, you know, we need to do something about this because you can't just, you can't just cut off a steering column or you just can't cut the A post, B post anymore or airbags are going to be pinning you. As a matter of fact, I know a couple of firefighters were seriously injured and I believe there was one fatality back in the early days of airbags. So they didn't lean forward on it. They knew it was coming and then had to deal with it afterwards. And I think this is an opportunity for us to lean forward on these things. So we talk about the passenger vehicles, but look, it's getting bigger, right? Every vehicle you see here is an electric vehicle, right? Even the fire trucks, right? You got you got the uh, uh, Pierce on the bottom, uh, Rickenbacker, or, you know, a couple of different, you know, FedEx, UPS, even tow and recovery vehicles, right, are coming out now. Um, so the bigger the vehicle, the bigger the battery, the bigger the battery, the bigger the fire, right? So we have to kind of prepare for that. What I just said, right? Now, what, what, what's what, what's cool about this picture is it shows you the buses, right? And buses, you know, electric electric buses, transit, commuter, um, they're out there now. And agencies are looking to buy more and more and more of these things. Now, you know, to, to recharge your electric bus, you don't pull it up to a, you know, 12, uh, 120 volt wall socket and plug it in, right? So what we're seeing in that top photo are the charging stations back in the yard. And the bus almost has a... Uh, 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 a, a pantograph uh, to go up and, and make contact. And down the road, and it's even being constructed in some areas, uh, right through your town, they're using electric buses um, through your town or city. Every couple of uh, bus stops or a couple of miles, they're going to, when that bus stops at the bus stop, it's going to have a pantograph station where it just raises up, makes contact, and recharges the battery right there at the bus stop. A lot of light rail trains are doing that right now. So that technology exists, and it's coming quick. So if this is your electric vehicle fire, right, how, how does this affect him? It's in the yard, right? Well, long, you know, the end run of this story is every one of those buses were lost, and every one of them is you know, pushing three-quarters of a million dollars, um, and there was no stopping it. It just kept walking. And of course, you know, no matter where the yard is, you get a fire going like this. Yes, fire emergency services, y'all, all, all the, uh, all, everyone's coming. And when you get there, you want to start shutting down or blocking roads or laying lines in the street, supply line. So traffic incident management, yeah, it still applies even though the fire is off the road. You're still, you know, just the response to it, you know, is, is going to dictate some type of traffic management. So the practices uh, for extinguishment and those challenges. You know, I told you they're, they're, those, those things are sealed units. You know, they're, they're made to be protected from the outside elements, including water, right, <laughs> especially water, you know. And, and, and there have been several studies and, and tests and a lot of research done um, with extinguishing the EV fire. And in, the, in your basic sedan, right, and, and passenger vehicle, right, it's found that, you know, you charge each three-quarter line or whatever it is you're using, and you start throwing water at this fire, and it's blowing out of there like a, like almost like a blowtorch, if you would. That's how it blows out the sides and the, the bottom of these vehicles. And, and as, as much as 90% of the water that you're throwing towards it isn't even reaching the seat of the fire, right? Be, be, be just simply because of the design of the pants. 
you know, and th there may not even be a pan breach, right? It could be a pressure vent that's going off. And you're throwing water in the direction of the heat, but you're really doing nothing except creating a lot of runoff and exhausting a lot of resources. Um, so, you know, is it is it a trash fire at this point? Yeah, it could be, but you still have to deal with it. You know, our, our, our internal combustion engines, you know, you know, eventually fire would go out, right? But in electric vehicle fires, it's not necessarily the case. It could burn burn for hours. I mean, just the other day, they had, there was a fire company dumped 12,000 gallons of water in the, on this particular fire, and it lit off two more times and route to the storage yard. You know, so, you know, pre-planning, and what are we going to do when we're out there on the highways and byways? Um, you, you know, where water's a precious commodity, you know. So these these are things that in, in your pre-fire plans and, and pre-action plans, you know, need to start happening kind of now, right? And we know because, one, first off, electric vehicles, battery-powered, you know, they have to be constructed as light as possible. With the exception of the chassis area, you know, where they have to survive crash tests and all, everything else is composites and plastics. So once you get this battery going, right, this vehicle is going to light off. It's a heavy fire load. It's going to burn hot. It's going to burn for a while. Um, and um, you, we're going to have to deal with it um, and pre-plan for it. Now, I'm going to tell you, this, this, is, a, this is a link here. And I'm, a, I'm told that you folks out there that, that, that can see this, you, you know, if you, you can click on this yourselves and get a much cleaner look at this. Um, it's a video. It's a YouTube video. Um, can you do that for me, um, Adam? Yeah, Joe, I'm going to bring it up on my screen here, and I'll play the audio through my phone, so this will play a little differently for for others. And uh, Yeah, so here we go. Yeah, electric bus bar. Now watch. Paris. This is in Paris, by the way. One thing you don't see, Now, here's, here's one thing. When I first watched that, I thought, wow, <laughs> that went quick. And then I had to look at it a couple of other times. And, you know, that bus went from a couple of sparks on the roof to fully involved, fully consumed within just a couple of minutes because we're talking downtown Paris, and um, there's not a fire or emergency services unit anywhere to be found in that video. So, you know, they're not that far away, right? So it happened really, really quick. And you could see, you know, of course, at that point, the bus is a total loss, um, but it's still going to burn. But what, even more importantly, look at the exposures of those buildings. And you know darn well when you look at that column of smoke, you know some of those buildings are taking on some of that smoke. So you're probably going to have fire alarms. It's just a mess. So you have to, you have to prepare. You have to prepare for that type of event. And it's going to be an extended event, and it could be, as we just saw, in you know downtown metropolis, or it could be way out in the hinterland somewhere. And when you're in the hinterland, right, water is the precious commodity. And you know, looking at a tanker strike force here, right, we're laying out portable water tanks, drafting water, water supplies, shuttle and water. This could become a norm right, out, out on the roadway somewhere. Now, you know, when, when you need copious amounts of water, right, you, you, have to, you have to either do it in a shuttle fashion or some other means. 
Um, but you also have to understand you're creating runoff, right? And I know of a case in a, in a uh, towing recovery yard where where there's a um, electric vehicle fire, uh, copious amounts of water was utilized. Uh, the, uh, the the local uh, environmental enforcement agency was monitoring, you know, channels. Heard this going on, came there, declared the uh, lithium ion runoff as hazardous. Uh, the, the the whole process of damming and diking, and then the uh, recovery yard uh, owner had to have uh, like uh, six inches of soil removed uh, everywhere that the uh, the runoff uh, touched. So they all, almost had to have their lot redone, um, and it was gravel and dirt. So yeah, it it, it was uh, quite an escapade for them. So we know what the challenge is, right? We know there are responders, and by responders, I mean you know, relief crews. Think relief crew, right? You know, you might have enough for your for your for your engine out the door, but if that engine's going to be out there for multiple hours, right? You know, you yet you need relief crews. You know, and the equipment, and the apparatus. You know, uh, there there are areas out there where it's uh, 45 minute response time to the scene. You know, so you know when you need help, you got to call early and call often, as they say, right? Because water, you know, is right now that's that's the preferred method. But we know, right, and, and we know the isolation of energy. You know, once it's lit off, it's a moot point. You know, if it's not lit off and you and you have to do extrication operations, well, yeah, you got to de-energize this thing, and you got to look it up, and you got to find it, and you got to get it right. Um, Europe, Europe is, uh, you know, th th this is their solution to uh, uh, to the passenger vehicle electric vehicle fires. And uh, they they pick they bring this unit to the scene, fill it full of water and a little bit of foam, and they just dunk the vehicle down in there. It has a tarp that goes over top, and that's how it gets hauled away to the yard. But you're not going to put a bus in there, you know, or or you know, a UPS truck in there, or any anything else. And and that I think I think that's where 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 we're, we're lacking our attention or our focus. Uh, on bigger vehicles, you know, smaller vehicles, I, you know, I think we'll work that out. It's the larger vehicles that are really going to present some problems um, once they once they light off. Now, and, and I talked about after the crash, right, and turning any wheels, right, the, the simple rotation of any undamaged wheel could cause thermal runaway, could cause a reignition, um, and and, it, and they've occurred numerous times. Uh, they recommend storage lots, right, to isolate uh, EV crash vehicles uh, from other vehicles and buildings by at least 50 feet. You know, I mean, in a recovery yard, can, can you even imagine 50 feet for one vehicle in all directions? So some of them are building three walls, uh, a three-sided concrete bin, and they just store them inside of there in order to conserve some space. Uh, and, and we know that there's been reignition several weeks into the storage yard. You know where it was no initial fire, so you know there, there's a there, there's a, a, a lot of issues that are taking place, and those batteries don't just show up, right? I mean they don't just like magically appear at the manufacturer, right? They have to get there, and they're being transported, you know, typically by truck, big truck, uh, and, and typically not a threat, right? But a 53 foot you know trailer tractor trailer can hold you know hundreds, if not tens of thousands of individual lithium ion batteries uh, and battery trays, you know, and they're handled as standard freight in massive quantities, you know, so any <laughs> forbid that there's a, a, an incident involving a tractor trailer hauling lithium ion batteries uh, that's involved in fire because then that's going to make, uh, that's going to make the news. So, you know, accessing the seat of the fire is going to be the challenge. Water is going to be the challenge. Um, and personnel. So, you know, there's there's multiple uh, agencies out there that that are are investigating and researching methods of uh, of extinguishing and, and and cutting down on the timeline. But for us, it's all about being out there on the road with this thing and, and having a plan. You know, what is the plan to deal with this and pre-plan it and try to handle it the same way. We would any other hazards. Um, you, you know, there, there's, a, there, there's an agency out there um, I, that, that, that I participated in. Uh, Angela uh, j just put a message in there, and I, she invited me to a webinar, and I sat in on there. And that, 
that, that, that individual agency said that uh, in the next three to five years, there'll be three to 500 new manufacturers, makes, and models of electric vehicles on our roads. So you know we need to step it up, <laughs> right? We need we need to get with it and prepare for it. So think Tim when you think Tim and start thinking electric vehicle fires and the challenges that that go with it. Uh, you, you know it, now's the time. Now's the time to lean forward and, and get ready. Um, and that's uh, that's that that's what I have on EVs. Um, and, and I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep educating myself and uh, stay on top of this. And if you have any anything that you'd like to share with others, please do. Um, you know, use our email, put it in the chat pod, and and um, you know, we, it, let, let's just get ready because you know the the future isn't coming. The future's here when it comes to electric vehicles. So we you know we, we need to get with it. So with that, I appreciate your time. And uh, Paul, I guess back to you. Yep.